The date was July 14, 1683. An enormous Ottoman army of 170,000 men, marching with a trembling footstep, had reached the front of Vienna. 154 years after the siege by Suleiman the Magnificent, the Ottomans were in front of the walls of Vienna for the second time in their history. At the head of the army was Grand Vizier Kara Mustafa Pasha. However, this glorious campaign would turn into a major defeat for the Ottoman Empire and even result in the flaying of the Ottoman Grand Vizier at the head of the army. Here is the Ottoman Grand Vizier Kara Mustafa Pasha who was flayed. Mustafa Pasha was born in 1634 in Mirzafan, Anatolia. His mother was Abide Hatan and his father was Oruk Bey, one of the leading cavalrymen of the region. Oruk Bey died in 1638 during Sultan Murad IV's Baghdad campaign against the Safavids. Left fatherless at the age of four, Mustafa's luck would be one of his father's closest friends, Vizier Kuperulu Mehmet Pasha. Mustafa was adopted by Kuperulu Mehmet Pasha and grew up under his care. Later on, he married the daughter of Kuperulu Mehmet Pasha and became a son-in-law of this family that raised many statesmen for the Ottoman Empire. Mustafa Pasha, who later became a statesman, showed great merits during the Ottoman Wars in Poland in 1672. And because he was very brave, he was given the nickname Kara to become known as Kara Mustafa Pasha. In 1676, four years after the Polish campaigns, he was given the office of Grand Vizier by Sultan Mehmed IV, despite his young age. The first thing Kara Mustafa Pasha did after becoming Grand Vizier was to move on Russia. Despite the snowy and cold climate of Russia, he succeeded in many battles and captured many castles. He then forced the Tsardom of Russia to conclude a peace treaty and return. After his return from the campaign, he solved civil and administrative problems throughout the country one by one and made life very comfortable for the Ottoman people in economic terms. He solved all urban problems, especially in Istanbul, prevented bribery and became an exemplary Grand Vizier in state administration. During the reign of Grand Vizier Kara Mustafa Pasha, who was said to be very good at his job, but also an arrogant person, people in Istanbul experienced more comfort and abundance than ever before. However, his main goal, even his dream, was to conquer Vienna by entering the heart of Europe. For this purpose, preparations for a campaign against Austria were started. All Pashas gathered, a war council was established and discussions began on how to conduct this expedition. Many Pashas in the Divan were of opinion that fortresses around Vienna should be taken first and that Vienna should be besieged next year. According to rumors, when Murat Garay Khan, Crimean Khan, whom Kara Mustafa Pasha did not like much, also expressed this opinion. What do you know other than eating rancid horse meat and insulted Murat Garay in front of everyone? Kara Mustafa Pasha, who has gone down in history with his backhanded answers and his temperament, determined the direction of the expedition as Vienna with his own decision. And according to some historians, he even informed Sultan Mehmet IV about it later. Troops from all over the country joined the army headquarters, and an army of unprecedented size was formed in Ottoman history. In fact, the Ottoman army at the Second Vienna Campaign is said to have numbered between 120,000 and 170,000. Kara Mustafa Pasha led this huge army to Vienna, traveling more than 870 miles. Arriving in front of Vienna, the Ottoman army set up camp and waited. If soldiers captured the city by force of the sword, it was the soldiers' natural right under Islamic law to loot the city. However, Grand Vizier Mustafa Pasha did not want this city and its treasure to be seized. Therefore, he started by cutting off all avenues of aid to Vienna. He even removed Murat Garay, the Crimean Khan, whom he did not like very much from the siege by assigning him to hold the bridge on the Danube. Since the Austrians, of course, did not expect a direct siege of Vienna, the city was not stocked with many supplies. As a matter of fact, Kara Mustafa Pasha thought that the castle's stocks would soon run out and the castle would surrender. Thus, on July 14, the Ottoman cannons began to pound the walls of Vienna. The Ottoman cannons did not stop for almost two months. However, 
Due to Pasha's desire to capture Vienna intact, there was no all-out attack on the city with troops. However, time was ticking against Grand Vizier Kara Mustafa Pasha. Christian countries such as the United Polish-Lithuanian Union, Kingdom of Poland and Holy Roman Empire formed a crusader alliance and set up to help Vienna. Under command of King Sebastian of Poland, this army of about 100,000 men had to cross Danube to reach Vienna. It was Marat Gary Khan who held Danube with a Tartar force of 50,000 men. Here, Marat Gary Khan, in one of the most important breaking moments in history, allowed the enemy to cross Danube without any resistance in order to take revenge on Grand Vizier Kara Mustafa Pasha. Thus, the Ottoman army, waiting in front of the almost fallen Vienna castle, woke up to a great surprise on September 12, 1683, surrounded by 100,000 enemies. Seeing that help was coming, the soldiers in the castle of Vienna attacked with great hope, and the Ottoman army was left between two fires. In the battle, the Ottomans suffered huge losses and retreated in disarray, leaving behind many things such as all the tents, all the cannons in the army and precious treasures. With this defeat, the Ottoman Empire suffered a great loss of prestige in Europe. More than 70,000 of its soldiers were martyred, and everything was lost to the enemy. Of course, the Grand Vizier Kara Mustafa Pasha, who was in charge of the army, was blamed for all this. Mustafa Pasha retreated to Belgrade with the remnants of his troops and waited for his fate. When Sultan Mehmet IV heard about the defeat, he sent the death warrant from Mustafa Pasha to Belgrade with his executioners. Although Mustafa Pasha was portrayed as an arrogant and hard-natured person, his execution was criticized by many people. Ibrahim Pasha, one of the Grand Viziers of the period, said the Sultan should not think of punishing such a powerful Grand Vizier by killing him because of defeat. No other Grand Vizier but him can prevent this confusion and enemy attacks. In the book titled History of Sevdet Pasha, then his enemies had him assassinated thinking that if Grand Vizier Kara Mustafa Pasha lived, next year he would right his wrongs, make the enemy pay for his defeat and soar high, and he would be no match for him. However, they never thought about who would take his place. They put their personal grudges and interests above all else and betrayed him. As a matter of fact, Sultan Mehmet IV thought that he had made a hasty decision and sent a messenger to Belgrade to prevent the execution of the Grand Vizier but this messenger arrived in Belgrade after the execution of Pasha. Since Kira Mustafa Pasha was an honorable statesman, he was executed by drowning without shedding his blood. Normally, his severed head should have been taken to the capital Istanbul to be shown to the Sultan, but since he was strangled, his head was not cut off. The solution was found in scalping. As a matter of fact, Pasha's face skin was peeled off and taken to the Sultan. This is how Silitar Findelilike Mehmet Aga describes what happened after Pasha's execution and his work in Silitar Tahari. After executing Pasha, they washed his body in the lower palace garden and performed his prayer there. Then they brought him back to the room and took his face skin off in the coffin, and his body was buried in the garden of the mosque across the palace. As for Murad Gedari Khan of Crimea, he did not pay for what he had done with his life. He was only dismissed from his post.